Here's your wrestling news for December 14th, 2020. And your headlines for today include, WWE plans to revisit Lana and Liv Morgan romance storyline. Why Kevin Owens cried in front of others revealed. More news on Keith Lee and others being sent to WWE PC. Why John Cena had to pay fine for WWE superstars. Why AEW's Dark Order made front page newspaper headline. Chris Jericho recounts the horrible situation when he almost died in a WWE match. Spoiler on Kenny Omega's upcoming Impact Wrestling appearance. What Vince McMahon really thinks of Matt Riddle. Braun Strowman shows off unbelievable body transformation and more. We are kicking off today with Lana news as last year she was marrying Bobby Lashley until the return of Liv Morgan and a profession of love for the ravishing Russian ruined everything. Though Lana and Lashley did get married later on, the angle with Morgan was never followed up on. But this week, speaking to Sports Kita, Lana said that the angle with Morgan isn't over yet, revealing, I can see the story picking up at any time, any day, you know? Like, I think it's a very, very compelling story and I would love to revisit it. So that's what I was told, that we're going to revisit it at some point. So I'm looking forward to revisiting it at some point. There are some obstacles before this can happen as Lana is on Raw whilst Morgan is on SmackDown, and both are currently involved in angles as Lana's teaming with Asuka and Morgan's reuniting with Ruby Riot. It's not uncommon for WWE to change plans or scrap any return to this angle altogether as the initial Morgan Love confession was done for a ratings pop and nothing else. And with Morgan's recent Live Forever documentary facing backlash backstage for revealing how often the company breaks promises, it may be quite a while before we see Lana and Morgan together again. But what do you think? Do you think the WWE should revisit this angle? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Now, Jonathan Coachman did plenty in WWE from wrestling to commentating to even being a GM. And this week, the coach fired back at a former WWE writer on Twitter. When Coach spoke about wrestlers being afraid in 2020 to deviate from their scripted promos, even by a word, former creative member Dave Schilling said how it's Vince McMahon who approves every word and it's out of the writer's control. This caused Coach to fire back, speaking about his own decade of experience cutting promos, though it's obvious that the process has changed since Coachman was in the ring. Schilling explained how names like Seth Rollins or Braun Strowman aren't afraid of a writer who's likely to be fired in a few months anyway, and added that working creative was the hardest job because the talent hate them for things they can't control. We doubt Coachman and Schilling will be exchanging holiday cards this month after this clash, but it's obvious that working backstage in WWE isn't easy. Fans won't have to wait long for the next episode of Monday Night Raw, though, and tonight's show has already got some huge matches announced. In the company's new Thunderdome, AJ Styles will face Sheamus in singles action ahead of the Phenomenal Ones WWE title TLC match against Drew McIntyre this Sunday. And we've also been promised the Nightmare Before TLC on tonight's broadcast. The New Day will team with Jeff Hardy to face the Hurt Business in six-man tag action, and with Lana vs. Nia Jax and another visit to the Firefly Funhouse already promised, WWE is making a stacked go-home edition of Raw before WWE TLC this Sunday. One man who will be hoping to win big this Sunday is Kevin Owens, the number one contender for the Universal title, and the prize fighter is no stranger to gold as he's a former Universal, NXT, United States, and Intercontinental Champion. Things could have been much different for Owens, however, as Nick Eugene Dinsmore revealed to Chris Van Vliet when he spoke about his time as an OVW trainer and the originally pitched idea for Owens in WWE. I told him, they got a new character for you. They're going to bring you in as the new Mountie. He was starting to cry. You can't let them do that. I said, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have the red thing. They might even bring Jacques in. It's going to be great. Thankfully, Owens wasn't the Mountie, as he instead debuted as himself in December 2014, and we doubt he'd be challenging for the Universal title this Sunday if he was brought in wearing the iconic red uniform. Would you have wanted to see Owens as the Mountie in 2014? And do you think the talented prizefighter could have pulled it off? Sound off in the comments below! From one former NXT champion to another as Keith Lee was sent back to the Performance Center for extra sessions to hone his in-ring work, though this may not be as bad as it seems. 
According to Dave Meltzer, who spoke on Wrestling Observer Radio, the decision to send Lee down alongside Omos, Otis, Dio Madden, and Dabo Kato is not being seen as a demotion, but rather a precaution by Vince McMahon, who wants to get the five ready for potential pushes. Meltzer also noted that the chairman has reportedly been annoyed at this group, saying how none of them know how to work. And whilst Lee's in-ring ability is undeniable, it's far different from how WWE usually presents big men. Lee honed his skills in NXT and promotions like PWG before that, which may explain why the boss isn't sold on his in-ring work, and hopefully the Limitless One and his cohorts will be able to improve in the eyes of the chairman in these sessions led by Adam Pearce and Drew Gulak. Now it's no secret that John Cena has a lot of sway in WWE, and apparently that saved Aiden English's career a few years ago. On his YouTube channel, Matt Raywalt, the former English, spoke about how he was almost fired for having fun and joked that he might have blocked this story out, hence why he hasn't told it before. The story goes that during a dark match pitting himself, Rusev, and Baron Corbin against the Usos and AJ Styles, the twin brothers started throwing a super kick party, and the match was meant to see English attempt a kick of his own before receiving one last kick from the Usos. Instead, the ref joined the super kick party as Styles donned the black and white shirt, leaving the actual referee to join the Usos in a triple super kick. A fun segment to be sure, but this led to some major issues as the team backstage quote, chewed a new one, and whilst Vince McMahon and Triple H weren't there, the producers were furious, claiming the spot had buried the business. It didn't help matters that this happened a week before WrestleMania, and English was told he was facing being fined $20,000 or even being released. And despite being sat down at a green room at the Mania Hotel and being told how terrible their decision was, English wasn't fired or paid up. Promoting the video on Twitter, Ray Walt said, Fun fact, John Cena actually paid our fine. And although both he and Rusev would eventually be cut in April this year, they had a couple more years in WWE thanks to Big Match John. Over to AEW next as the Dark Order has evolved quite a bit since their debut, and recently, that caused quite a buzz in the Great White North. Given that both Evil Uno and Stu Grayson are from Quebec, Canada, the Ottawa Sun newspaper featured both on the cover of their Sunday issue, something Uno was more than happy to share online. Not only is this a big win for both men and the Dark Order, but being on the cover of a newspaper with on average 40,000 issues printed every day is a great way to promote AEW. And even with Brody Lee out of action, Uno and Grayson are clearly holding things down in the Dark Order. Speaking of AEW, Chris Jericho has accomplished plenty in the promotion, but when Lei Champion recently saw a WWE clip starring him in 2009, he had to comment. The 2009 match in question saw him and the Big Show lose in a TLC match to DX, and the finish was meant to see Jericho be super kicked off the Giants' shoulders through a table. Unfortunately, the spot wasn't measured correctly, so Michael's kick saw Jericho hit the table face first and bounce off it. Replying to a gif of the match, Jericho noted, I almost died! Well, Chris Jericho said that Y2J should put that on the what the hell was I thinking list. That spot and match didn't go how Jericho wanted, but at least he lived to tell the tale of that very scary spot. Kenny Omega next as the AEW World Champion showed up unannounced at Impact Wrestling's final resolution, and there's big plans for his next Impact appearance. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained that Omega's next Impact show will see him compete, but it's unclear who he'll be facing. There's a rumor that Omega will be getting an Impact World title match soon, which would put him in the ring with Rich Swan, who retained the title against Chris Bay in the main event of Final Resolution. Omega has described himself as a belt collector, as he already holds the AAA Mega Championship, and time will tell whether the cleaner adds the Impact World Championship to his collection. Back to WWE now, and the company may have once had big plans for Lars Sullivan, but now any plans for him are a distant memory. Ringside News has learned that not only is Sullivan not being used on SmackDown, but he hasn't even been around the blue brand in recent weeks, and there are no apparent plans in place for the freak. Sullivan's last SmackDown appearance came in the form of a sit-down interview with Michael Cole on the November 6th SmackDown, and he's only had two matches in the past year. It was also reported that Sullivan's recent hiatus from television isn't due to injury, and although there's always the chance that WWE could once again change their mind and decide to push the freak, it seems Sullivan's career is a lost cause at this point. 
One man who knows about start-stop pushes himself is Riddle, and despite rumors that heat with Seth Rollins caused the two to swap brands during the draft, that doesn't matter to Vince McMahon. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer noted that the chairman thinks the original bro is a funny guy, saying, Vince likes the guy. I don't know if he wants to push him to a main event, but he likes him on TV doing this stuff. He just doesn't get the bro thing. But he thinks he's funny, so we gotta keep him on TV. He may be funny, but Riddle is more than a comedy character, and the fans realize that. And it appears that the original bro and his bro-nut jokes are here to stay on WWE TV. Now, earlier this month, Pat Patterson sadly passed, and since his death, we've heard plenty of what the man was like behind the scenes. One man who worked closely with Patterson in WWE was Chris Jericho, who revealed that the Hall of Famer was able to hold his own behind the scenes, even with Vince McMahon. Speaking on Talk is Jericho, Y2J explained, Vince goes, well, what does everyone think? Do you like this? Of course, all the yes men are like, this is great. And Pat said, this is terrible. This is a terrible. Where's the young guys? What are we doing? And everyone's kind of just sitting there like, oh my God, he's chewing out Vince at the front of the booking meeting. The fact that Patterson was able to call out Vince's booking shows just how close they were, and we wish more people were able to do that to the boss, especially with some of his more questionable booking that's made it to TV. Now, Steve Austin had a gift on the mic that only a few people could match, but Mac Hollins of the Miami Dolphins certainly gave it his best shot in his imitation of the rattlesnake. Smashing two beer cans before drinking them like the bionic redneck, WWE replied to Hollins' video with a well-earned, oh hell yeah! And whilst Austin is yet to respond, we're sure he loved this tribute. Back to the ring and Braun Strowman has taken to social media once again to show off an unbelievable body transformation. Sharing two photos of himself, the former Universal Champion showed just how much progress he's made, and we expect Vince McMahon will be ready to push the chiseled monster among men once more when he's back from his ankle injury. Impact news next is Doc Gallows hasn't appeared on TV for two weeks, and we know now why the World Tag Team Champion has been AWOL. According to PW Insider, Gallows has an acting job, though there's no specifics on what said job is, but we're pleased this is why he's missing and not because of injury. And finally today we're looking at Chelsea Green, who's recovering from the arm injury suffered during her SmackDown debut last month. On Twitter, Green showed off her surgery scar and joked about getting closer to her sixth main roster debut, and we continue to wish her a speedy recovery after suffering an injury at the worst time.